Hey, fun fans, my name's Angel, and I'm here at the Texas Championship on the Mercury Division with Team 4206 Robobikes. I'm here with Jose, Valerie, Tom, and Dom to explain their robot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. We're going to pass it on to Valerie to talk about their intake. Okay. All right, I'm Valerie. So our intake is called the gripper and the way it works is there's belts that um that the motor you that the motor does and it spins and it makes the <laughs> belt move in to grab the cone and then it spins the opposite way to spit out the cone and cue that's a very nice intake can you explain why your team went with this design and not many of the roller intakes that we've seen throughout the season so we actually designed and tested 15 different claws. And the reason we went with this one was because the one, a 111 team posted on Chief Delphi and we decided to test it just to have like another testing to see if it works. And so then we tested it, it worked really well. And so then we made a few modifications for it to fit on our robot. And so then we went with that because it worked well. It could score high, score low, score middle. And it was an easy, it's an easy claw. It's easy to put together. And then it also, it's a fast claw, like it's the touch and go because it spins. Well, very reliable intake uh, that I've seen. Now we're going to go to Josue, who's going to talk about the arm. My name is Josue. So this season I worked on the arm, which encases the claw when it goes into a store position. So on the arm, starting with the, with the top, the wrist uses the 36 tooth pulley with a 104 tooth belt that rotates the wrist about 270, 265 degrees. And this allows us to store inside. The arc allows the claw to store halfway in to avoid any clearance issues. And then going down the going down the arm, the elbows is driven by a gearbox by which is on a max spline. So this year we used a lot of a lot of rev to bring it together. All right, very very nice arm, very nice machined arm. Now we're gonna go to Tom to explain the elevator. So we kind of did our own thing with the West Coast Products Cascade Elevator. There's a couple main differences between this and the COTS version. So on the West Coast Products version of the elevator, the chain runs this way, and we decided we didn't want the chain running and uh, getting in the way during matches. So we actually tucked the chain in in between the rails. And then because of that, we had some gearbox issues. So we have the gearbox down here with one Neo and then a custom gearbox with a 15 to one gear ratio driving the sprockets. Um, all of these rails were machined on our Haas mini mill. And then we originally had a crossbar on the top of the elevator, but we decided to switch that out with wires and turnbuckles. Well, it's a very des uh, efficient design and I'd like to see it in use. So let's go to Dom with the programming and let him explain that. Yeah, so we took the same design from last year in terms of our swerve. We have an SDS MK4 L3 module, uh, one turn, one drive, a can coder. For our elevator and uh, all our other subsystems, we use Neo motors with uh, spark mass controllers. Uh, for each of them, we use PID control, which is built into the spark max. Um, on our elevator, we use the relative encoder and our wrist use the relative encoder. And then on the shoulder, we have a three bore encoder located right here. So we can do more precise measurements. We originally had um, a three bore on top of our wrist, but it wasn't working so well. So then we decided to use the relative. Well, very nice uh, robot that you got here. Can we go ahead and see it in action? So then we intake the cone. Boom, sticks in, then we're going to go high, spin it out, there we go. 
And let's move it back right here. Boom. And then get a cube. And take it. Go to mid. Has that same effect. So that, yeah, that claw design it really helps us because it's kind of universal. If you just pick it up in one orientation, then it's really easy to get it moving. So that's a very interesting uh, control mechanism that you have there. Can you go through that with us? Yeah, so this is our button box. So here we have the different levels. So three is going to be our high, two is mid, and then one is ground pickup. So we have these different colors here to indicate which one we want to pick up. So this is our cone, and this is our cube. Here we have our fast food button, which is what we call the double substation. So this will extend out high if you want to pin over to the camera. So it'll extend to the double substation, and we can pick up a cone over there, and then go back to down low. For this position, we have the, what do we call a T-Rex. So it's just going to extend above our robot so that it keep, keeps our intake protected. Um, we have our we have our single substation button, which goes down over here. I don't know what happened there. Um, and then lastly, we have our LEDs button, which if you pan to the LEDs over there, it'll change different colors to indicate which game piece we want to pick up from the substation. Well, RoboVites, thank you for taking the time to do a Behind the Bumpers with us. You have an amazing robot, and we can't wait to see what you do here on the Mercury Division. For now, I'm Angel, and this is Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.